Hello, welcome back to another video tutorial here at Geek Play Studios. My name is Gary Miller. Found myself uh, taking pictures uh, down at the pier right by my house. I came across one of these lights, and I've always liked these little um, lighting fixtures. And so this is the project that we're going to model today, creating one of these. So let's get started here in v in Hexagon. Now we're going to do a little magic here today, um, especially when it comes to the UV mapping. Um, we're going to UV map this light, but for reasons that uh, are different than how I normally UV map it. So you might find if you're kind of new to the whole UV thing, uh, you might find this to be extremely beneficial and easy uh, for the for the models that you create. All right, I'm going to start off with a cylinder and I will create four sections and for the number of points up here I'm going to put in 30 and I'm going to close that off. I'm going to stretch this out a little bit. All right, I will select those bottom ones and I'm going to loop it and I'm just going to drag it down a little bit. And the reason is because when I apply a chamfer to the bottom, it seems as though I lose a little uh I lose a little distance here. And so to compensate for that, I that's why I dragged it down a little bit. Okay, so with a little chamfer applied to the bottom, we'll go ahead and validate that come over here to select faces select that top one vertex modeling tab and I'm going to extract that and now I'm going to use my sweep surface tool and sweep outwards just a little bit come up this is just to create a little decorative sconce on top something like that Okay, done with that. Come back to select edges. I'm going to select that edge and then these two edges. Loop them, add a chamfer to them. I'm just going to add a very small chamfer just so that it knocks off those harsh corners. If you click off, now you see it's, uh, it has a little bit of a, a rounded effect to it. Okay. I'll go ahead and hide that for now. Coming back to the glass portion of this model, I'm going to come over here to select edges, select that edge, loop it by hitting L on the keyboard, and now I'm just going to count over 10 of these um, edges. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and I will loop that, and I will count over 10 more. 1, 2, 3, and I will loop that. So that is why I chose 30 subdivisions because I knew it would be easily divisible by 3. Okay, now come over to the Lines tab and I'm going to extract that and with them all selected come over here to Surface Modeling and I'm going to add some thickness to this. Not a whole lot. There we are. Maybe a little bit less. Validate that. Actually, I, with those still selected, I'll just weld them together. Come back to my glass, and I'll select that one, that one, that, and that. Loop those. We'll come over to the Lines tab, Curve Extraction, with them still selected come over to surface modeling and we'll add some thickness to this and this is going to be that cage that covers this whole thing so let's weld all that metal stuff together and we can weld that top piece together also Okay, now what I need to do is I need to reduce the size of this, shrink it down just a little bit so it's not poking through into the metal. 
and grab that top edge, loop it, and I'll just drag it up. Actually, let me grab my metal here, and I can close off that bottom. There we are. And now I will bring this just right up into there. Perfect. I will select everything and weld it together. And now let's create the top part, which is, oh, here we are. And I will use my lay on tool, lay it right up on top of there. And let's stretch it out a little bit. And I'll pull the back of it back just a little bit. There we are. Select edges. I'll take this. Uh, actually, I'll take the top two edges here. It's, it's a little bit high. There we go. Bring it down. I'll select this front edge, and I'll bring that down. Select these two side pieces, and let's add a chamfer to them. increase the range. There we go. Now what I want to do is I want to bring the chamfer in till these two edges here touch or almost touch. There we are. Perfect. And I'll go ahead and validate that. Uh, and the reason is because I want a center uh, division down here in the middle, not a solid uh, polygon. But these are awfully close, so come over here to the Vertex Modeling tab, and I'm going to click on this Average Weld. And it, let me zoom in here too much. You'll be able to see, if I increase this number, the moment I start increasing it, those two points will jump together. And that's what I want. So now I will validate it, and it will weld those two points together. So now I have that, that line right down the middle, which is what I wanted. All right, so with select edges, I will select that edge right there, loop it, hold down shift and deselect that one in the back, add a chamfer to this. That looks good. Validate that. And now I'll just center it over my light. Okay, so that's our very quick, very simple lighting fixture. So let's take everything here, weld it together. Now we're going to UV map this, this object. So come over here to the UV Paint Tools, Split Screen. And I am just going to choose any one of these projections. It does not matter. It does not matter for what I'm going to be doing. So uh, I guess I'll choose Cubic Projection validate that. Come over here to select faces. Now I'm just going to choose the select the faces on the glass light itself. And I will hold down shift and hit my plus button until all of these polygons are selected. And I'm just going to scale them down and move them off to the side. Select those. I'm going to scale these down and move them off to the side and it doesn't matter I can make them as small or as large as I want for the for what we're going to be doing for to this it doesn't matter in fact I'll really screw things up let's try this let's really screw it up just to demonstrate it doesn't matter okay I'm happy with that let me bring up my menu here I'm going to save this UV map and I'll call it test UV map. Save it right there on my desktop. I'm going to open this up. Actually, um, I'll save the object too because we are finished with our modeling. So file, export, wavefront, and I'll call it test. Save it to my desktop, save. And now I'm going to open up Photoshop and I'll be right back. All right, with Photoshop open, I'm just going to drag my UV map right here into my open window. And with my rectangular marquee tool selected, I'm going to 
select roughly half of my screen and hold down alt and delete to fill this whole side in with black with this mark key selection active I'm gonna come up here to select and I'm gonna invert it now the selection is on this side I'm gonna change my foreground and background colors to white now hold down alt and delete now all we're using this UV map for is to distribute the two materials onto our light and the current image size of this is 380 by 380 we're gonna we don't need it that large I'm gonna change it 10 to 10 so now this is our UV map this tiny little thing and I'm just gonna come up here to file and save and we are finished in Photoshop so now if I open up my UV map this is it right here this tiny little insignificant thing it is totally useless but for what we're doing it doesn't matter in fact its size is 2.73 kilobytes absolutely insignificant I'm gonna fire up view and I'll be right back okay here in view I'm gonna open up a uh, create a new layer file import object and this is my light and oh uh, maybe I should have made it bigger all right and let's rotate it around a bit and take the sun shadows to about 50 percent okay we've got one object and we need to apply two materials to it so with it selected come up here double click on my material icon and we're gonna create a mixed material double click on this material and what I need to do is choose uh, oh I'll choose this glass here let me bring the window into view. I'm going to choose this blue glass because it's easily uh, visible. And on this side, oh, I'll choose metal. Uh, there we are. And I always like this painted rusted metal. That will work. Now up here I want to choose object parametric for the distribution. And now we need to tell view how to distribute those materials so in the distribution area here right click edit function click here create an empty node and I'm gonna create a mapping node here so I'll click up uh, click on that and navigate my way to the desktop where I put my UV map and it is there it is grayscale output click OK and now you can see that view has divided up the materials 50 on one side 50 on the other so let me click OK and let me do a quick render see we've got the glass where the metal is supposed to be and the metal where the glass is supposed to be and there's two ways we can fix that let me double click on it we can swap the materials out here that's one way or right click edit function we can we can reverse it this way as well so come back into view do a quick render and voila look at that we got um, one model two different materials which is fairly easy to do there's several ways you can go about doing it but the reason I did it the way I, uh, I I showed here on this video is to demonstrate that you can you can really uh, have a lot of fun with UV mapping um, and use it in a way to distribute your materials rather than have to lay everything out in a nice finely organized mesh and take a lot of time using views UV mapping tools instead 
I just bypassed the traditional way of UV mapping and uh, I used a distribution map instead of say UV painting. So that's it for this tutorial. I hope it maybe shows a little bit uh, more clearly how you can use the tools and manipulate the UV maps to make your life a little bit simpler and still get the textures on the materials or still get the materials on your objects in the way that you want. So thanks for watching here at Geek at Play Studios. My name is Gary Miller. Have a good day.